Welcome to Fill Your Boots. Covering critical times of the season, FIL hosts industry experts, colleagues, and most importantly, local farmers like yourself, bringing you useful insights and different perspectives to help you drive performance on farm. Welcome to another podcast of Fill Your Boots, brought to you by FIL. I'm B. Murphy, National Sales Manager for FIL, and today we're talking about hygiene. Our guest with us today is Mike Robinson, FIL area rep for Mid Canterbury and formerly from Southland, shifted up here last year, Mike. Um, welcome, Mike. Tell us a bit about your background prior to FIL and tell us how long you've been with FIL. Thanks, B. Thanks for having me. Um, previous to FIL, I was, well, farming background and from milk and dairy cows to working from FIL, so I've got that dairy experience. Uh, I've been with FIL now for about six years. Yeah. And you sit into your seventh season, basically? Yeah, coming in, yeah. yeah. First year up in Canterbury. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Canterbury, um, totally different to Southland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got rain up in Canterbury, but it comes from um, still things that rotate around a paddock. In Southland, it just comes from the sky, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, see, it comes from the sky all the time down in Southland. So the, the climate has been a big change for the family, but... Um, the also size of the farms and the size of the dairy platforms has been quite eye-opening. So let's let's get into this hygiene side of things. Um, you know, quite often, you know, I have farmers say to me, oh, grade free, does anyone really get grade free for a season? Um, you know, like, what's what's the benefit in grade free, et cetera? Um, you know, and, and with obviously with all these uh, milk companies offering more rewards based on performance, I, I guess we're getting more into this now that we need to crack into this hygiene side and be grade free. You know, in, in your view, is, is grade free achievable? Oh, definitely, yeah. I think it's a big focus point at the moment. Like, grade free is definitely achievable, and I think everybody should be striving to do that. You come across you know, people that think that they can't do it, but if they have standard operating procedures, staff training, um, good knowledge, and you know, staff have got good capability, it's it's definitely possible. I see more and more of it. Look, in my area alone, one of my clients is what fifteen years grade free. There's another one who's not one of my clients, but he's thirty two years grade free now. So certainly very achievable, um, and and even on big plants, you know, but to have a clean milking machine and have your milk go to its top quality, what are the key elements to a clean, hygienic milking plant? To keep it basic, there's four key elements. It's not just about acid and alkali. You'd be looking at chemical, so that would be your dosage, the type of chemical. Uh, then you'd want contact time. So contact time, I mean um, the contact of the water through the par- uh, plant is long as possible you know and that comes into you know when you're doing a hot wash recycle you want that water to be going in there at about around 80 85 for the time you've dumped part of that water to get that temp there you're dropping down to about 70 depending on the plant but you don't want to hold that water in there any longer than um, 50 55 degrees otherwise it starts to all start going back on so the longer you can keep that contact time of water going through that plant the the better your milk quality is going to be and then you've got the turbulence you know you've got high turbulence plants you've got flood wash plants you know it's all all these elements that you need to look at um, to know what you're dealing with in that plant because that depends on what you want to be checking and how you want to be doing it and then uh, a big part for me is uh, temperature so that I'm meaning by water temperature uh, that's a key element yeah that Look, that water temperature, I mean, obviously with a whole lot of new um, technology of automatic wash systems, etc., they monitor that um, to a certain extent. But, you know, how many times do we go to a shed and one of the hot water cylinders is not working um, or um, the dump is going too late? So, you know, like you said, 55 degrees dump, they probably want to be looking at the low 60s to start dumping so that water's out by 55 that would that be a fair point that would be a fair point yeah and and, and another another key thing there about that temperature is you never trust the gauge you know on a vat uh, um on a water cylinder you know like the best way is like um we have the 
uh, temperature stickers, I find them are very helpful for staff so they can read that when it's stuck to the actual milk line, you know, delivery line, so they can tell by that, give you a true reading. I think you're quite right, those temperature stickers are good for considering we have such a diverse range of workers on farm. When I say diverse, we have many cultures. Those temperature stickers are probably a must-have on your plants. Probably. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I agree. I see more and more of them, and um, yeah, that's something I like to see. So, you you know, in your, in your checks, you said um, turbulence, things like that. So... Um, in your experience, you know, how critical are the monthly plant checks and what should farmers be looking for? Well, I'm a great believer in the monthly, you know, it's just not a box ticking exercise. You've got to, you've got to look for all your, um, you know, your hot spots in the plant, um, you know, and you want to be, your, your, your monthly check needs to be, you need to be looking thoroughly at that plant, you know, your receiving can, your, um, your cups, your liners, uh, your milk line, um, milk tubes, you know, automatic drains. Um, you n- never take anything for granted. It's it's not a once-off thing. It's a, you've, you've got to be consistent through the year. As soon as you start taking shortcuts, you're going to run into problems, and that that's where you're going to let yourself down in your milk quality. So it's just start at the beginning, start strong, and just keep going through that right to the end of the season. You know, Don't take shortcuts. Be your worst enemy. Well, you know, they say uh, most accidents happen less than five kilometres from home, and uh, you and I see it all the time as um, dry-off dates announced. Maybe it's May the 14th, for example, um, and uh, then we get issues like in those last two weeks as the foot comes off the accelerator, so to speak. Um, but, you know, monthly plant checks, it, 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 you said quite correctly, it's not just a tick-the-box exercise. Yeah. And like my advice would be, and your advice would be, if you want your FIL rep to take one of your key, two key, key staff through and see what they do on a monthly plant check, just so they to do it, ask for it. Would you would you do that with some of your guys? Oh, definitely. Like from the beginning of the season, I'm um, a big fan on. <clears throat> we have staff trainings, so we go through all the key elements. We go through all the hot spots, um, and whether they're the manager to the relief milker, I'd like them to have my phone number. So if they, they have any questions, um, they can ring and ask. And if they've got the education, it's, it's just the winner. And, the, and they have the drive to do it without knowing. I remember when I was dairy farming, um, when I first started, you know, I was doing the washes. I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was putting that uh, that much in there, and I, I didn't know half the stuff I knew now at the beginning. If I had known that, it would have been easier, and I probably had would have, would have had more confidence. Uh, it took a while to I had to do my own homework, but now we're, we're big on training, and, and I think that really helps with grade three. Yeah, and you're so right. You know how many farms you go to, and um, you know you need to know thermodynamics what corrects the majorics, yeah. you know, um, the acids and alkalis. It's, it's not just, oh, you just throw this chemical in because this guy said it. You know, it's there's got to be that. But, you, you know, you, you made earlier reference to the um, milking platforms in, in Canterbury and compared to Southland. So no shed or plant are the same anywhere in New Zealand. Like, I always look at them. It doesn't matter if they're the same shed that is the same factory they can be actually quite different just like cars can be um so what is the importance of a tailored wash program on your shed oh it's very important there's so many and you're definitely correct in that like just because they come from well it's a certain brand that they're all different all the elements you know the your water quality um the type of acid you use um a, a big thing i see more and more a thing i've seen up here and in southland is the size of the wash tub which makes a a big difference that you know don't necessarily think that that wash tub's the right size for your plant of you know i've been an experience on a 50 bale and the the wash tub actually holds 800 so they were dosing to the um to the wash tub so they were putting 800 mils in you know there's no saving in that it's next to 300 mils um or even worse the other way around yeah even worse the other way around um every plant's different you've got to 
really look at that plant, see how it washes, and also recycling is a is another thing. I'm big on recycling, and um, there's some really big savings to be made in that. Yeah, you, know, you know, you say recycling, and and recycling is probably my bugbears, and because you know vats or silos are picked up at night, um, and we often see that the guy goes to, the first worker goes to get the herd in, the second worker worker should be starting at the same time and washing the vat, but he arrives a little bit later and the recycling on the vat doesn't get achieved. You know, we're seeing probably, uh, uh, you know, I can only speak from my experience, I'm probably seeing more great issues coming from vats, you know, so recycling of vats at least once a week are, are very important in where I come from. So. I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, and, and in the past, um, I don't see that not so much now because FIL team actually have those recycling yeah. units that we carry. I think that's been a um, a big in- improvement because yeah. if they don't have it, um, we can we can help with it. Um, where in the past, if they don't have a recycling, there's, there's probably a wee bit of a cost in getting that. Um, I'm big on recycling, and I think that's that saves you a lot of time and money. It's a small amount of time for a big saving. You know. Um you can often go to some of these big sheds that have a recycle pump right next to their vat, um, and that actually saves time, um, money, and chemical. You know, so you know, I'd, I always, I, I was astounded that if one of those is beside a vat and it's not getting used, it's sort of I have to shake my head. But anyway, that's just me. I shake my head a lot, Mike. Oh, I shake my head. Yeah, <laughs> seen one the other day that was um, the shed was five years and it hadn't been plugged in it was still yeah taped up inside the unit <laughs> <laughs> so um when a farmer's looking at their docket or their app and something comes up on their phone um like a, a low level collie or low local thermi thermoduric um or even a somatic cell spike what advice would you give them to either look for or what level should they ring the FIL rep? Well, the milk quality summaries, you know, it's a, it's a big one. You, you get the, like, for the likes of thermos, you get you get some spikes, well, get a few readings at 1 to 300. It's kind of like looking at a needle in a haystack, you know. You, you get around that 500 mark, you'd want to call your local rep, um, have a talk to him and go through it. And there's certain things that um, we would ask to tick those boxes before it went any further, simple things, you know, thermos, you want to look at your temperature and uh, your dosage and come across it, you know, you get a wee spike and it hadn't been washed that afternoon, big things the vat, yeah. Uh, you get those low level thermos, tend to look at the vat. Collies, you'd want to, want to be, start getting a wee spike in that, you know. Um, cow manure can be a wee one there, you've got to ask that question about the weather, what was it, what was it doing that day? Yeah. Um, Temperature and the vat, another big, big key. Even uh, animal health, if we if we extend that a little bit, you know, like coliform mastitis. Yeah. If you were tested on that day that a cow presented coliform mastitis, you can get a huge spike. Yeah. Um, but like what I am finding with all the milk vat vomit, milk vat monitoring systems we've got, a lot of these things are actually starting to get corrected. Um, you know, if I look at last Christmas, where I probably would do uh, multiple grade calls, but I might have attended six or seven, you know, inquiries. I probably did two this year. Yeah. You know, so I think that's helping. So on our phones, we all carry our phones with us, Mike. We all have pictures of sheds. We all have pictures of horror stories or what we found, you know, just as reference, you know, so we can show farmers that this is your hotspot, this is what I found. Is there a particular horror story that probably haunts with haunts you or you'll never forget in your time with FIL? Yeah, there's been a few. I suppose one that one that really sticks out, um, I called into a shed one day, I was having a chat to the farmer and we were just yarning about farming really and then he said to me, he goes, oh yeah, I've got a... Um, 300 collie alert the other day and I said oh yeah and he, and he said oh it just come out of nowhere and I said oh well, you know would you like me to have a look I'm here and he was like oh no no it's only 300 we won't worry about it and I said hey look I'm here I'll get the camera we'll do it so I checked a few things and I went to the milk line it was a hearing bone shed 
um, and I took the end cap off, and um, and it all just fell out. I took a photo. I had it fell out like a big stalag- oh, uh, like a big stalactite dripping never, from the end of the. Never seen anything like it. It just come out in big a big clump. It was almost like a. Uh, it was a lot of amount, and it just hung there. So what had happened is um, right through the herringbone line, it was just, you couldn't see through it. It was just curdled milk. It was, um, I don't know how to explain, it was thick like it had been mixed and right through the main delivery line out to the vat. And um, the milk pump had stopped working, but the farmer sort of hadn't taken notice of it. And, and I'd say it had been like that for about three or four days. So I'd, I think we were pretty lucky that I possibly called in and maybe he mentioned it. If it was, it could have been worse. But that, that was, I'd never seen anything like it. I, I just saw the photo and uh, it looked like Play-Doh coming out <laughs> yeah. the end. You know, it was just dripping. Yeah, it was interesting. Well, you know, probably in finishing, um, what advice, like there's a lot of contract milkers going into the next season. Um, there's a lot of guys, you know, um, they try to save, everyone's, trying to save money because farming isn't that easy you know we're trying to save money what advice would you give to a contract milker in regards to a, any chemical rep as in what do you look for in a chemical rep or um, do you need to get that right person on your side to have your back I think it, I think it's very key um, knowledge is everything uh, to me um, the perfect rep for me is someone who's honest, um, wants to get out there and, and help, um, has a passion for it and is very knowledgeable and you know and what you need to be doing and, and, and the build up of the chemicals as well. I think that's a big point that a lot of people miss. Uh, probably a pet peeve, if you don't mind me saying, of mine is um, I hear acids and acid. There's so many acids out there, different dosing rates. You know, water quality is a big thing. Um, yeah, knowledge is key and, and knowing why you're actually doing what you're doing. Taking ownership of their plant. Ta- ta- taking ownership, yep. yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because like we said earlier, not every plant's the same and every plant will have certain hot spots, so taking ownership. Well, Mike, thanks for your time today. It's been uh, good talking to you again um, and we wish you well in mid-Canterbury. Thanks, All mate. the best. Yeah, you're hanging good. in there. Good luck. Yeah, right, good. Cheers. No, thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to Fill Your Boots. If you'd like to learn more about the topics covered in today's episode, talk to your local FIL manager or head to fil.co.nz.